The uh, topic tonight is acceptance, and I want to also put into the chat window a quotation from Ajahn Chah, who's uh, no longer alive, but a very highly respected, even revered teacher uh, in um, Southeast Asia, uh, Thailand, I believe, and a, and a teacher of teachers, of people like Jack Kornfield, Joseph Goldstein, Sharon Salzberg, and others. And uh, the quotation from Ajahn Chah is, if you let go a little, you'll have a little happiness. If you let go a lot, you'll have a lot of happiness. And if you let go completely, you'll be completely happy. So tonight, what I'd like to do is use that appreciation of acceptance, pardon me, of letting go, as an entry into uh, my topic tonight of acceptance. And tonight, and probably next week as well, I'm going to be exploring acceptance applied to our experiences, applied to ourselves as a whole, warts and all, applied to other people, ugh, other people, and applied to the world, which will break your heart or can break your heart. Uh, so how do we come to acceptance about these things? It's completely normal to wish that things were different. It's normal to experience some things in particular as unpleasant, to not like them. That's perfectly normal. And sometimes things are difficult, sometimes very difficult. But there's a distinction between the difficulty of things or the way they feel unpleasant, and that's a broad word, unpleasant, from very subtle discomfort to extraordinary overwhelming agony, emotionally or physically. It's a range. Um, there's a distinction between the unpleasantness of things or the difficulty of things and our aversion to them. Problems come up when we move into aversion, when we move from not liking it to feeling bothered by it. And a great deal of Buddhist practice and a great deal of, of wisdom practice in general is to mark the transition between the ordinary experiences of life, pleasure, pain, relatedness, uh, or none of the above, and the distinction between those normal reactions to life and our reactions to those reactions when we get into trouble, right? trying to hold on to what's changing or push away what's ongoing. That's the territory of non-acceptance. And that sense of not accepting, of aversion, bothered, ugh, uh, is often accompanied by various other friends, <laughs> righteousness, resistance, anger, fault finding, badgering, or any other kind of struggle. And in other words, aversion is something we add to the in innate hedonic tone of unpleasantness, which means that there's a great opportunity here to reduce our suffering and the harms and the way we land hard on other people by not adding aversion to unpleasantness. And acceptance is the antidote to that aversion. It is true, and some people really bang this drum, it is true that resisting, fighting, being really aggravated about the way things are can fuel efforts to change the way things are but at a cost, a cost of stress and conflicts with others, and sometimes getting so carried away that we actually end up fueling or perpetuating that which we're trying to change. Um, there really is a different way to function. We can aspire, we can make efforts without getting caught up with quarreling with the way it is, struggling with the way it is. And I really invite you to keep applying the ideas I'm talking about here, the, the, uh, the abstractions, to what's concrete, to something you're fighting with inside yourself maybe, to something you're fighting with out in the world, and to explore the possibility of discerning what you discern and valuing what you value and planning what you plan without adding a version to it without adding, in effect, non-acceptance to the way it is. Much, if not most, actually, 
of our stress, emotional pain, and conflicts with others comes from friction, from resistance, from not accepting life as it is. Also, if you think about deeper levels of practice, more profound aspects of practice, like opening out, softening the contraction of self, moving into a growing sense of connection, even oneness with all things. The opposite of that, movement of practice and movement of the heart is contraction. And a primary source of contraction is not accepting the way it is. Now, of course, acceptance, very important point, is not agreement. It's not about being passive about the way it is, inert, just, uh, succumbing, giving up. For example, accepting other people does not itself mean approving of them or waiving your own rights or in any way minimizing or downplaying their impacts on you or their impacts on other people. We can still take appropriate actions to protect ourselves or others. We could take appropriate actions to reduce pain, to on the short term or the long term, try to make things better. We can do these things while still accepting the way it is. And sometimes we accept the way it is and it is the way it is and there's nothing we could do about it or we choose for hopefully good reasons, not to do anything about it. Maybe because we're deciding to invest our limited resources in doing something about other things, let's say. Uh, and, you know, it is interesting that in acceptance, we're facing reality as it is. We're surrendering to the fact of it, independent of our preferences about it or our plans regarding it. You may know this teaching from the Third Zen, the Third Zen Patriarch, uh, translated typically this fundamental, extraordinary piece of wisdom uh, from him, um, sometimes translated as, the great way is easy, the great way being the path of awakening. The great way is easy for those who have no preferences. Now, that word preferences, you know, it's important to understand. We can have preferences, obviously, about feeding children compared to not feeding children is perfectly appropriate. But when we get caught up in insisting that things be a way that they aren't, right, that's when we get into trouble. Acceptance means we kind of give up to the truth, the facts, the reality, no matter what it is. We may not like it. We may not prefer it. We may feel sad or angry about it. But at a deeper level, we are at peace with it. We can even be at peace with not being at peace with it, which is a very useful psychological move. In other words, if you can't accept something, can you accept that you cannot accept it? And if you can't accept that you cannot accept it, can you go even wider? and accept that you cannot accept that you cannot accept it. And at some point you get to acceptance, which then becomes the container of the whole thing. And that's actually kind of a skillful little mental maneuver there. So <clears throat> um, to finish up here, and then I wanna focus on the first of my four kinds of acceptance, this one being accepting experience and the actual how of that. Um, when we come to peace with the way it is, we're disengaging from feeling aggravated or upset about it. Your heart may still be very heavy. There may still be this animal reaction in your belly to the world getting hotter or smokier or more unjust, let's say. There could be great sorrow about the impact on other people. All of that could be true. There could be, frankly, understandable animal fear about the course of your own illness or you know, or sadness at an irrevocable loss, that can be present without suffering it, without adding being bothered or invaded or overwhelmed by whatever that is. And that is such a blessing right there. It honors the suffering, it, on, it, it sees the, the tragedies of the world, the injustices of the world, the hard things in the world, while at a deep, deep, deep level, 
in the core of your being, not being disrupted by it, not being overwhelmed by it. And sometimes, in addition to the sheer blessing of acceptance itself, something happens. It can seem almost magical sometimes that when we stop resisting the way it is, sometimes it can shift into something better. At bottom, acceptance grounds us in what is true, which is where we always have to start for any true effectiveness. We have to rest in what is true. That's our fundamental refuge. Uh, I've thought to myself from time to time that the fundamental altar I bow at is the altar of reality, whatever it is. Acceptance, therefore, in the ways that it grounds us in reality as it is, and acceptance in the ways that it disengages us. It's like a circuit breaker from the suffering and harms that we add to the way it is. Acceptance really is the foundation of wisdom and inner peace. and how to do it. So I want to start with accepting our experience because that's what we live in, of course, and also because why don't we accept things? Well, very often we don't accept things because uh, like a condition in the world or the way another person is or something about our own body. Because if we accepted it, if we just really, it is what it is, right? We would feel things, we would experience things that we don't want to experience. Like for example, um, recently I had a situation, um, I won't get into all the details, where someone that I thought was a real friend of mine, uh, a real helper, benefactor, actually totally dropped the ball about something that was obviously important to me. And just did not do the thing he said he would do to move this project forward that I was part of. Three weeks went by and I realized, and, and, and he suddenly realized that he had dropped the ball. We tried to figure out what to do and it was clear that nothing good was gonna happen here. And so here's my friend, sort of, who, for whom I didn't matter enough for him to really get on the ball with this commitment he made me to move this project forward by basically passing it on to somebody else. It would have taken him probably five minutes to just pass it on to someone else. And he knew it was really important to me because of the context and the way I was about it. But well, for whatever reason, you know, we, we do what matters to us. And sure, we can get distracted. Sure, there can be other things flying around. Um, but the bottom line is if something matters to us in another person, we step up to the plate and deal with it, right? We, we take care of it. We get the job done. <laughs> you know what I mean? It matters. So we do what matters. And I can realize, oh, to him, I didn't matter that much. I don't matter that much. And that's, so, so then if I were to accept that fact, most likely a real fact, and this is not a bad person, but clearly, net net, it wasn't a priority. I was not a priority. And so, if I really open to that, ah, I feel sad. I feel hurt. Um, I feel disappointed. Uh, certain hopes I had about ways in which this person could be helpful to me, or there could be a deepening of our friendship. No, probably not. I may process with him about it. Maybe not. Maybe so. Maybe something will happen. I don't know. But I'm just saying in, in real terms, as an example, if we open, if we really accept things, other feelings, more difficult feelings, can sometimes move forward. So in effect, not acceptance can be a defense against our experience. So if we're interested in opening the field of conditions that we can accept as they are, in, including in the wise ways I'm describing, in which we're not approve of the, approving of them necessarily, and we're still reserving our rights to do things about them. But if we want to get the value of this foundation of wisdom and inner peace that is acceptance, we have to start with our own experiencing. 
and being able to accept our experience and tolerate our experience and allow it and allow it to flow because that's foundational to any kind of acceptance, including accepting um, our experience. And um, so I want to talk about accepting experience. And I also want to say with regard to someone from Courageous Leadership who made a comment, which I appreciate, um, I have to be careful about the meanings I give the events. You know, sometimes people just do stuff, who knows what. Um, and and I want to be clear, I'm trying to separate in my example here, my view about this person and my level of certainty about that what I'm actually seeing is true, that I actually don't matter that much to this person. Uh, but I want, and I'm trying to separate that out from the example I'm giving of the resistance we might have to accepting the way it is, because if we soften around the way it is, whew, we might feel things we don't really want to feel. So um, that said, my hunch is that my my discernment here is accurate. Uh, so we'll see. Okay, so how to accept, right? It seems like such a simple thing. How do you accept? Except most of us don't accept. So I'm going to go through kind of a checklist here. I'll move through it kind of briskly. I'll try to keep it under 10 minutes and then have at least 15 minutes for questions and situations. Okay? So um, <clears throat> accepting our experiences. This is Mindfulness 101. This is absolutely foundational. So to begin with, it really helps to step back from the experience and witness it, right? And to, to know it. So mindfulness, basic mindfulness, is to acknowledge what it's like to be you, to acknowledge what you are experiencing. It helps to step back from what you're experiencing rather than being identified with it, right? Be the space, be the witnesser, kind of 20 rows back watching the movie theater rather than glued to the tube. If it's difficult, take your time. Take breaks if you need to. And if it's very painful, touch it and let it go. I've talked about emptying my own bucket full of tears, one spoonful at a time. Let the experience be whatever it is. This is the essence of mindfulness. It's helpful to appreciate that experience is a little bit like a song with many parts. There are the lyrics, call that the thought track. There's the rhythm. You know, the bodily sense of it. There's the music, the melody line, call that the emotions. There's a kind of movement in the experience, call that the desires. Then there's the what the, the actions, you know, what's actually happening. Uh, be aware of all parts of your experience, right? So for in my little example here, I could be aware of feelings, of different kinds of feelings. I could be aware of the body sensations of the feelings. I could be aware of thoughts or beliefs. I could be aware of desires in the experience. I could be aware of the movement in my body when I feel hurt, kind of curled up over my feelings, or angry, you know, feeling bigger. Um, you know, be aware of the parts of your experience and also the layers of your psyche. Um, this little episode, uh, and fear not, I'll, I'll get through it, it's really okay. Uh, you know, stirred up all kinds of material from being younger times in my life when people did not come through for me uh, or somehow I was invisible to them, especially if, as in the case of this person, he has in some ways higher status than I do in certain circles, all right? So that deeper stuff can get stirred up, younger, deeper material. So as, we, as, we be our, as we're mindful of our experience, we're mindful of the different elements in our experience, the different, you know, aspects of the song of experience, and we are mindful of the deeper layers of our psyche that are engaged with the experience. You know, it could be that a more adult layer is engaging an angry, righteous case, and a younger, softer, vulnerable layer, oh, is just slumping with a certain depression, being aware of all of that. And then tolerating the experience. If we can't tolerate it. Uh, we can't be, we can't accept it. We push it away. So one of the key findings in psychology, interestingly, 
is that one of the major factors of mental health issues is low distress tolerance. That's the term that's used, distress tolerance. You know, people who have a hard time dealing with their feelings, so then they move into various defenses, including self-medicating with drugs and alcohol, for example, um, or getting angry at themselves that they feel certain things. So, you know, it can be challenging to feel what we feel and to want what we want. So to be able to tolerate our experiences we need to resource ourselves. So understand why you are accepting. I, you know, For a long time, I didn't want to feel my feelings. I had to understand why it was actually important to feel them and to realize, to put it a little graphically, that the mind is not a flesh toilet. The mind is much more like a septic tank. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you put down, it sticks around, right? So it's important to uh, feel our feelings and accept our feelings to allow them to flow at a very minimum. So the reasons to, it, it's helpful to understand why are you opening to your experience? Why are you feeling the pain? Why are you accepting just what you're experiencing in the moment rather than uh, trying to keep it at bay? Understand it so you, so you know why you're doing it. That helps you resource yourself to accept your experience and experience your experience. Second, it's very interesting, let go of beliefs that tend to push away experiences, like the belief that life should be other than what it is. And this is very interesting, to be able to distinguish between appropriate beliefs about justice and decency and fair treatment of others and you know, rules and morality and so forth, to be careful though that that doesn't become, that moral clarity, let's say, doesn't become a kind of position in you that has a big should around it, that life should not be this way. In some sense, it shouldn't be this way. But in another sense, uh, if, you, if we get identified with that view of it shouldn't be like that, people in my example shouldn't treat others like that, when we get caught up in the should of it, that gets in the way of accepting the experience around it. And there's an interesting just depth in the facing of suffering and betrayal and disappointingness. People often disappoint. It's part of life. I'm not saying it's good, but there could be a kind of acceptance of it which softens the sting of it in a strange kind of way. Self-compassion is also a major resource for experiencing what we experience. Um, Self-compassion, we've talked about before, it's basically the wish that a being not suffer applied to yourself. And it can really help. I mean, it, it helped me in my own process with this uh, to just go, oh, to bring a kind of warmth, a certain sweetness to yourself. Ouch, this hurts. I wish it didn't. May I not suffer, much as we would offer to other people. It's there's a tenderness in it, and in the tenderness and the the intimacy with our own experience and self compassion, we we move closer to it when we're compassionate for it. In that, is itself a soothing balm to what hurts. And last, as a resource to be able to tolerate our experiences, be aware of what is not unpleasant, what is not disappointing. You know, the, the experiences in your body, the sensations in your body that are neutral or, or pleasant, or enjoyable, they're doing okay. You know, breathing is going on still. Um, being aware of what else is working out in the world. Uh, be aware of those who support you. You know, those who are trustworthy those who are kind. I mean, I talked this episode through with my wife and she was very supportive. Uh, even if there aren't people we can actually talk things through with, we can get in touch with the feeling of them being with us based in our history or even just using our imagination today. So the sense of others who are with you, who are allies inside your being or with whom you can have positive experiences can help you tolerate you know, painful experiences, including feeling let down by other people. And then 
moving into now really letting experience be. Recognize what you're not accepting, and then around it, try to soften in your body. Softening in the body is a major support for accepting of your own experience, accepting your own experiencing. Soften the body, because very often there's a part of the body that kind of tenses up related to a particular issue. And you can almost feel it like to, you know, if you if if someone has sort of insulted you or let you down, you know, there's a certain reaction pattern to that. If you've discovered that you've messed up in some way, that's also something to accept. There's a reaction pattern to that. Uh, so <clears throat> soften in the body really supports acceptance. Name the experience to yourself. Noting. A lot of research shows the value of noting. Just, oh, hurt, betrayal, anger, uh, fantasies of payback. Mm, I'm going to get him the next time. You know, next time he wants something from me. Uh, you know what I mean? You can really get into it. Just uh, uh, name it to yourself. What are you feeling? What's it like to be you? Not good or bad, no praise, no blame, keeping it simple not heavy-duty psychologizing, just, ha, ah, what's there? That's a useful method. It's also helpful to appreciate how the experience that you're having, and even a painful one, is part of a larger whole. Like maybe you're stuck in traffic on the way to work, and uh, you don't like that. You're really bothered by that. Remind yourself that this experience you're having is part of the larger whole of making a living, other people making a living, Cars, traffic, cities, people, you know, living apart from where they work. It's part of a larger whole. Or, um, you know, even no matter what you were experiencing, it's nested in our decision, our ongoing choice to remain alive. And this, this suffering, this sorrow, so for me and my own example here, it's part of the fact that I have a career. I have work. I'm interested in certain projects that draws me into relatedness with others, and that exposes me to disappointment. It's not to minimize the disappointment, and it's not to you know, try to suppress my own reactions to it. It's to recognize, oh, oh, this experience is dependently arising. It is a knot. It is a rippling in a wider net of causes and factors extending in all directions, backwards in time. That's a way to help yourself accept your experience. Also, let it flow. There's a reason a lot of experiential practices relate to exhalations. Letting it flow, flowing through you, experiencing it out. You know, it's okay to gently, you know, I think of, as you know, you've probably heard me say, I think practice has three fundam fundamental movements in it. Letting be, letting go, and letting in. So we there's witnessing, releasing, and receiving. And it's okay to have a shift start to occur from simply being with your experience, simply witnessing it, to, uh, to the extent you can, letting it release. Feeling tension flow out of your body, getting a sense of the experience dissipating. Uh, there could be a sense of giving it to the universe, letting it flow through you. You might visualize it. You might have a sense of being in a warm stream that is washing it away, sweeping it away. You are releasing. You're letting it flow. You're letting it in on its way out the door. Also notice that when you stop resisting a difficulty or an experience, it starts feeling less difficult. The experience starts feeling less painful. That can motivate you to continue this practice. And also appreciate yourself. That can help you bear your pain. Bearing the unbearable. Appreciate yourself as a being who can bear the unbearable, who's big enough, courageous enough, heroic enough, if only one touch at a time, to bear the unbearable. Honor yourself. 
for the hard things. You know, the load you're carrying. I think that basically everyone has a secret struggle. And I'm not saying that all struggles are equal, but I think everybody has a secret struggle and we have no idea the struggles, usually, of the people walking past us on the street, sleeping next to us, sometimes at night. We don't know actually how hard it is inside them. And it's hard for us too. So appreciating that. And then finishing on my way to discussion, uh, have patience. Patience is one of the uh, perfections in Buddhism, one of the qualities of a bodhisattva, one of these qualities that we develop. Patience, I think, is really underrated. In patience, there's an implicit recognition of impermanence. Things change. Things continually change. Sometimes things take a while to get better. Uh, as you're dealing with stuff, um, maintain your practices. The, you know, like for myself, because of this upset that happened to me late on yesterday, uh, I really raised my game today to just kind of process the upset around it. Um, and whatever that might be, make sure you're eating as best you can, you know, trying to get sleep. You know, when there are difficult things to experience, difficult things to accept, support yourself with your practices. The more difficult your life, the more you need to take care of yourself. And last, I'll just finish here by saying that inner pain and outer difficulty is part of life. Dang. <laughs> Some might say it has a special value. I don't know. I think there's a way in which difficulty adds savor to what's pleasurable, but I'm not sure it's necessary. But that said, it is unavoidable. Inner pain and outer difficulty is an unavoidable aspect of all lives. No one gets out of this life without inner pain and outer difficulty, and sometimes a lot of pain and a lot of difficulty. And meanwhile, your own good qualities and the good things in life persist and remain. So, questions or comments? I'm gonna do this through the chat. And so I've seen a number of things, uh, beautiful comments coming in. And um, uh, so I'll just, I wanna call out something that people have called out repeatedly. There's a beautiful practice very much related to acceptance that has the acronym RAIN, R-A-I-N. It originated with Michelle McDonald uh, as a teacher in the East Coast of America. And then it was really, it's really been developed by Tara Brock, uh, one of my friends and teachers, who's done a beautiful job with it. The acronym RAIN, R-A-I-N, can, the R-A-I-N, or sometimes you mean different things, but basically R stands for recognize, and then A stands for acceptance, or maybe even a different way to saying it, allowing. I think allowing is very experiential. Acceptance can sound sort of philosophical and strange. It's just allowing it, non-resistance, right? I is investigate, where there's an exploration. Oh, and sometimes to investigate it, we need to do it in, in touches. We touch it, we step back, we touch it a little more deeply, we step back. We go in all the way then, but you know we investigate it, we explore it. Um, investigation is one of the seven factors of awakening in the Buddhist tradition, to actually bring curiosity and interest to our own experience. And then N originally stood for not self, is to disidentify from it, to not try to possess the experience or to claim it as your own position or mine. It's present, you're not psychotic, it's in a, it's in a particular individual's stream of consciousness. All right, but we don't need to get um, egoic about it or identified with it, not self. And there, there are other words sometimes that are that are used for the end there. So that's a useful acronym, RAIN. Um, I added RAINBOW because if you think of it, RAIN itself is very much focused on the letting be, first of three ways to practice, which is the foundation of everything, but it's not an entire practice. And I think, um, you know, I forget the what I made up for BOW, but it basically had to do with moving into letting go, letting go and taking in, um, you know, some useful experiences that uh, relate to whatever it was we've been using RAIN for. Okay, so. Questions, comments so far? Um, 
Okay. I want to say that in the future, next week, I'm going to talk more about accepting yourself, including parts of yourself that you don't like, or maybe parts that other people criticized and you felt ashamed of or disowned or pushed away. Um, and one of the main barriers to self-worth is a lack of self-acceptance. How can you experience confidence and self-worth and feeling fundamentally likable and lovable and worthy of love and like a fundamentally good person if you don't accept major parts of yourself? So this goes to the ways in which in our psyche, if you think of the psyche as like a mansion with many rooms, we tend to um, lock certain doors, the basement, sealed off. You know? We deny parts of ourselves and then we live then we live divided and that's not good. So I'm, next week I'm gonna talk about self-acceptance in a broad way, in part related to uh, feelings of low, low worth and shame and even related to trauma. I'm gonna move then into the topic of accepting other people, including people that you trusted and let you down. Uh, in you know, uh, or people who are actively attacking you, you know, accepting them, and then more broadly, um, accepting the world as it is. Which so I'm going to get to these topics clearly. As someone has brought up just a moment ago, um, Naya, and I'll use your name if you post publicly. I won't use your name if you post privately to me. Um, she says, "How do you accept that Black lives haven't mattered?" I'm a, I am aware of this in your country. In mine, it is about the abuse on women who have been systematically ignored, killed, and abused. It's terrible. And, and so this is, a, this is a very rich territory. What, and I'll, I'll get more to, to acceptance of the world probably week after next, which is very relevant, obviously, in a political season. Um, the short version is to have both be true, to recognize the reality of whatever something is. It is a reality. And to recognize that and in effect, in the service of a moral response, really, really open your mind to the reality of it and to not live blinkered by privilege. Acceptance of the fullness of the horribleness. America is reckoning with 400 years or more of slavery and then systematic oppression of black people and related kinds of oppressions related of many other groups, including people of color and et cetera. So, and I'm not trying to leave anyone out. Women, in my view, if you think of it as a class, have been the most mistreated group of people throughout all of history, as best we can gather. So I'm, I'm not trying to make an equivalence here, make equivalences, because how do you do that ultimately? But the point is, we can, through acceptance, actually stop not seeing the complete catastrophe of it all. While also doing what we can to make it better. And I think that's a very important distinction. It can get kind of abstract and philosophical and I and people can get caught up, not that not that you are, Nayeli, uh, you know, with language. Boil it down. What happens when you can feel it at a bodily level? There's a kind of surrender. You know, and you one thing to practice with is what's it like to actively surrender to something that's easy to surrender to? Like for example, I have a glass. Can you deliberately surrender to the color of my glass? I can. I, and what's it feel like to be surrendered to it, to completely accept it? You may not like it, you may like it. It is what it is. What's that feel like? You know, it's, it, there, there's something very embodied about true surrender. 
and then expanding it out, what would it be like to bring that same attitude to all the joys and sorrows of the world? All the helpfulness and all the hatefulness in the world. You can have a moment there of almost an enlightenment about it, where it just, it is what it is. And also, we can mobilize to do things about it. And that's so interesting, that, that, just, that combination of acceptance and engagement. And we can, we'll be exploring that with regard to the world. Tonight, I especially want to emphasize uh, something that actually is, is not easy for many people. It's not common for many people to really let go in, in relationship to your own experience and to really accept what you're feeling in the moment. Literally, what are you feeling now? What are you thinking? And what's it like to completely accept your own streaming of consciousness? To really open to it and allow it. That's really peaceful. There's a freedom in it. Yeah, in the comments, great comments. Acceptance is not sanctioning. It's just being able to see the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's sit with us. And if you can, going back to Ajahn Chah's teaching, Letting go. You know, he taught that basically meditation and life is about awareness and letting go. I think of it as awaring <laughs> and letting go. Awaring and letting go continuously. So let's just sit here for a last minute together, exploring awaring and letting go. Resting in the accepting of flowing, the accepting of the flowing of experiencing. You might explore in the week to come the combination of accepting and blessing. And I want to mean that word blessing in a very secular sense of just accepting and wishing well, accepting, wishing well. Take care. <laughs>